Hi everyone. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is Yoram Koren. I live in New York City. I I uh, I'm referring. I, re I guess I'll refer to myself as an enterprise media wiki uh, uh, developer, consultant, hoster, and author. Uh, I've been trying to popularize the enterprise media wiki concept. Um, uh, I, I run a consulting company called WikiWorks, and I wrote a media wiki book called Wiki Media Wiki, which is uh, which was first published in 2012. And uh, there's a there's another version, a third version that's hopefully coming out uh, by the end of the year. Um, and it's really the only media wiki book out there. So. Uh, okay, so I'm talking about graphs and tables. Um, here's a. What do I mean by graphs? I'm talking about graphs in the semantic web sense of the term, and here's one from, uh, from uh, it's an official document, uh, image I guess, from the, the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. So you have here, uh, you've probably seen variations of this. Bob is interested in the Mona Lisa, and so you can express all the information about the world if you just have enough uh, nodes and arrows pointing to each other. Um, that's graphs and then tables. I don't really need to tell you about tables, but here's one of just a random table of uh, millions. Um, we've got rows and columns. Um, any data set can be stored as either a graph or a table. The, the, the question is uh, which do you use and uh, uh, you know, for which purposes? Uh, in which cases is it better to use graphs and, and in which is it better to use tables? Uh, they both have a long history. Um, I, thought, I thought it was interesting that uh, Dr. Auer had some historical photos in his talk, because I, I also have some, including one from an ancient Egypt again. Uh, this is pretty neat. This is from uh, a temple. I don't know if you can see it that well, but some people call this the first spreadsheet, apparently. Um, <laughs> This is apparently a, an, an image of the amount of uh, tribute that different groups gave in different years to the pharaoh or whatever it was. And it, it, you know, it's, the structure is exactly the same as uh, tables are now. Um, and this is from 1500 BC, so, so the tables have been around for a long time. Um, uh, and then I... I this one I'm really less sure about, but this is a, a, something like a graph that I found from 1080. Uh, this is um, a, a monk. It's, it's hard to see, but the, the, those really are nodes and arrows, and there's explanation of relationships between, I, I think it's uh, the elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Um, so uh, I, I don't know if this is the an early example of a graph, but if so, it took a Apparently, 2,500 years to go from uh, to, to to get from tables to uh, a graph representation. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're talking about tables, uh, obviously there's relational databases, i.e., SQL-based databases. Uh, you've got spreadsheets and CSV, uh, and then I contend that infobox calls in MediaWiki are also an example of tables. We'll get to that. Um, for graphs, in the semantic web sense of the term, uh, generally the discussion is about triple stores and uh, then RDF XML, and then of course a lot of uh, alternates. These, both of these um, columns, lists could be much longer. Um, so yeah, what do I mean that MediaWiki templates define tables? Um, you can think of every column to a template as a single row of a table. Uh, you can think of every template parameter as a column because they're fixed. Uh, as soon as you define the table, the template, you have a fixed structure. Uh, and then integrate every individual value as a table cell. Uh, let's ignore for now the fact that now that there's this uh, Scribunto extension and modules that uh, the templates can actually take in any, uh, an unlimited number of parameters and do something meaningful with them. Uh, those. You know, I'm talking about, I guess, templates in the classical sense of the term. Um, so yeah, this is this is just a, 
uh, a very cursory explanation, and, and I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a, an expert on RDF triple stores, but it, just in terms of their advantages and disadvantages. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, people will, I, I think even uh, RDF uh, evangelists will agree that when you're talking about computer-generated data, uh, relational databases tend to be better, although I'm not sure about that. I mean, a lot of people use a third category of NoSQL uh, databases for things like that. Um, but uh, relational databases have been around since the 70s, and they're uh, ubiquitous at this point. I mean, anytime you just uh, get a hosting option, it's going to have uh, MySQL on it, at the very least. Um, our RDF is a very new concept uh, and new technology, and uh, it's um, it, it's it's a little it's more uh, do it yourself at this point if you want to make use of it. Um, Semantic Media Week is interesting in terms of the tables versus graphs. It usually for people who use templates, which is most uh, SMW users, it's usually holding what I would call tables. Um, but then it's representing that data and querying it uh, as triples in, in, as a graph database. But then again, you're storing it usually in a relational database unless you uh, are using the, uh, the RDF Sparkle option. Um, so, and so the fact that it's sort of uh, what, uh, a mixed, uh, some people would say neither fish nor fowl, um, means that you can't uh, directly use either SQL or Sparkle on it. Instead, there's a, a, a custom query language that you all know called ask, um, or the ask parser function. Um, it has limitations. I actually had to cross out one of the limitations because it, it turns out it's coming in the next version. Um, but uh, and not to belabor the point, uh, uh, obviously, the Semantic Media Conference, I don't want to, uh, you know, start shouting about some media with you, but, but everyone who uses it knows that there are some limitations to the querying. Um, and all of these things are doable uh, in both SQL and Sparkle. Um, it's not surprising, I mean, I mean there's a, a, a ton of work that's been put into both SQL and Sparkle to get them to be as powerful as they are, and, and um, uh, maintaining something like ask is a lot of work too. Um, and of course, ASP has the extra difficulty that everything has to be translated to both backend SQL and Sparkle, um, so it's twice the work. Um, so yeah, I'm not uh, you know trying to cast uh, aspersions on, on, the, on uh, people's efforts. Um, uh, so yeah, Cargo, um, it's a, a media extension that I put out last year, you can see the URL there. It's an alternative to Semantic Media Wiki uh, that stores data in true tables. So each template is stored in its own database table, whole, you know, with the structure that you'd expect, you know, columns represent template parameters. Uh, and then if you make a change to the template, like adding a field, all you have to do is just recreate the corresponding table. Um, and then its querying is just a, a, a thin wrapper around SQL, so, you can, so it takes advantage of all the, the power of SQL um, to do its querying without that much uh, uh, development work needed to, uh, to uh, uh, get it working. Uh, this I thought was interesting. You, um, uh, Cargo provides a URL at Special View Data, which is basically an API into the, the data, uh, so it serves as an SQL endpoint, which th it, it, this may have originated, the, this may be the only example of an SQL endpoint, I'm not sure. Uh, with, with Sparkle, that's obviously the, the big, uh, that's obviously the, the, the goal of Sparkle is to provide a web-based endpoint for querying the data, but with SQL, that's, uh, that's very rare. Um, so this may be an innovation on the part of Cargo. It's a, it's a special <coughs> data API. Um, it, so it's, it's using SQL, but in a Sparkle-like way, again. Um, side note, this isn't really related to anything, but I, I, I wanted to mention it at the conference at some point. The, uh, the, um, uh, one of the last 
pieces of cargo functionality that was missing to, to match what a, the Semantic Media Wiki provides is, um, is uh, watching, uh, getting notified about changes to the uh, data. So now there's the Edit Notify extension, uh, which I, I was one of the mentors for. As it, it was a Google Summer of Code project that just ended uh, a month ago or so. Uh, uh, and um, created by uh, my student, our student. Um, so yeah, th this extension exists now. You can see that that URL, um, it lets you get emails when a, when a certain template field changes, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so it's a not, so, so semantic watch list is, it's uh, the, the closest alternative, is the alternative in semantic media with you all. So it's a non-semantic equivalent of that. It doesn't uh, make use of cargo, it doesn't, or uh, and cargo doesn't, rely on it, but it's, it's just a way of uh, doing what you can do with Semantic Watch List with, without Semantic Media Week installed. Uh, another th one thing that's missing in Cargo still is, uh, is RDF output and Sparkle querying, uh, you know, per the theme of this talk. This could be added. Cargo can be made semantic, you know, capital S semantic, uh, semantic web uh, friendly. Uh, it's just not. It's, something that hasn't been done yet, but it's certainly possible within the framework. Okay, so back to graphs and tables. Um, uh, I'm, I, I'm just mentioning, I'm talking about Wikidata, I'm not explaining it, uh, uh, that'll be safe for a talk tomorrow, I guess, but um, uh, let's, I'm assuming everyone knows about Wikidata, if not, I apologize, but um, uh, it would be interesting, I think, to have a cargo-like storage for Wikidata's own data, not as a replacement for what it uses now, which is an RDF triple store, but instead as an addition. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be an official Wikimedia project, I'm just, I'm throwing the idea out there uh, because I think it could be very interesting. Um, why would that be interesting? First of all, I think uh, it, this may be what enables a drill down interface, but I'll get to that later. Uh, oh, okay, fine. Um, the fact that it would use SQL and, and provide its own SQL endpoint ideally means that uh, a lot more people could run their own queries. Right now you need to know Sparkle and you need to know the, the schema of Wikidata in order to run queries. And uh, you can find uh, online a lot of people who have created queries and so forth, but it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very small handful of people relatively speaking, who can uh, do that kind of thing. And if you open it up with SQL, at least for the time being, given SQL's dominance, uh, a lot more people could run queries. Uh, and it could lead to greater structuring within Wikidata, as sort of a, a side effect, a side benefit. Uh, yeah, so about drill down, that first thing. This is conjecture on my part, because I don't, uh, I don't know enough, and uh, I, I talked to some people, I, I, I don't know if anyone I, I, don't, I don't know if this is a known thing yet, but basically, um, RDF triple stores can't, cr can't create temporary graphs, and this is getting a little technical, but uh, there's the semantic drill down extension that you may know about, um, and then Cargo has its own equivalent of that, which is essentially the same thing. Uh, they both make heavy use of temporary tables uh, just for performance reasons to prevent all those queries from being extremely slow because in order to do a drill down you really have to run a lot of queries per page. Um, so RDF triple stores can't create temporary graphs which may mean that you can't do a drill down interface uh, with an RDF Sparkle triple store. I don't know. Uh, this may be true and, and, and so uh, I'm, I'm, this is going on the assumption that it is true. Um, and if you don't know about semantic drill down, I apologize, I don't think I put in a slide showing a, uh, uh, an example of it. I can show it later if there's time. But, um, and so if it's true, and if Wikidata data replaces categories on Wikipedia, I think this would become an issue for Wikipedia as well. Um, uh, and uh, Replacing categories on Wikipedia was one of the original goals of uh, Semantic Media Wiki back in 2005. And uh, I'll show you an illustration of what I mean. Um, here is a very small snippet, I don't know if you can see that, uh, from, um, 
from the category films on the English language Wikipedia. There's a whole bunch of subcategories uh, here. There's films by city, by country, by language, audience, continent. So these are all uh, subcategories with the express purpose of filtering. These, these only exist so that they can provide additional uh, children subcategories that, uh, to do the specific faceting of this information. Um, so this makes perfect sense for a replacement by a faceted drill down interface uh, to, to make the whole thing dynamic so that you don't need you know, thousands of people going in and, and doing this, all this endless categorizing of everything uh, when you can get all that information already from the data, the info box data of each page. Um, so yes, yeah, so that would be really neat if Wikipedia offered something like semantic drill down uh, some kind of dynamic drill down interface uh, and basically just got rid of categories altogether. Some unsolicited advice for the Wikidata developers. I don't know how many there are, maybe one or two, but uh, it's enough for me. Um, I believe Wikidata should store a mapping between classes and properties for that class. Um, meaning that if you uh, uh, you know, if you have a, a page about a film, then you should be able to know in advance what are the properties for a film. Like, a, a film does not have a population, but a film does have a director and that sort of thing. Uh, that can be done either by defining domains for properties or the other way, by, by defining allowed properties for classes. Um, this information is already stored in Wikidata. The, the users basically did it on their own by putting all that stuff in top pages. And here's a small snippet. Uh, from the top page for, uh, for, uh, for the property of capital. It says that the domain of this property is everything that's, a, that's an entity, a territorial entity. Um, there's a, UI, there's an, uh, a QID or whatever it's called for that. Uh, and then there's also something for allowed values, which is uh, the range of the property. Um, uh, this is strictly unofficial and it's not used by, by the software as far as I know. Um, so yeah, it would be great to turn this into official data. Uh, why do that? First of all, because it, it fits into my, my main goal, uh, my main topic, which is translating the data into tables. Um, uh, because once you have a mapping between classes and properties, then it means you can know the structure of each table of data. It's the set of properties that are allowed for that, for that thing, whether it's films or cars or countries or whatever else. Um, again, back to drill down, although this is a different drill, this is a different thing. Uh, it, it lets you define the drill down filters for a class. Um, it's not related to the speed, but just the fact that if you know the set of properties for a class, then it means you know what the facets are, the, the filtering can be for that class. Uh, and then finally, you can prevent editing errors uh, in Wikidata. Um, so yeah, so the uh, besides just the domain, there's allowed values, which is the range, and then the data type and allowed units. Uh, here's a fun example. Um, this would be something that's an exception. How do you handle exceptions? So there's this person named, she, she named herself Erica Eiffel, and if you see here, in, in her Wikidata entry, under spouse, the value is listed as Eiffel Tower. Um, this person she, that's, that's her thing. Um, this is actually not an ideal example of what I'm talking about. First, because it relates to the range of, a pro of the property and not its domain. Uh, and I, th I think ranges are less important um, for the purpose of structuring the data. Also because maybe, I'm not sure that that value should be there. It's also there in the English language Wikipedia, but it, it, that to me sounds like the definition of, a, of what we'd call a non-consensual relationship. Uh, so, um, my suggestion is to allow exceptions, but just show a warning of some kind, saying this is not, this is out of the ordinary. So this is what it would look like on, the, on this person's Wikidata page. Now, there'd just be a little icon, a warning icon, or something like that, saying, uh, uh, be aware that this is not, uh, this does not fit the structure, the data structure as we've defined it. Yeah, so my overall message, whether you're a, a Wikidata developer or a semantic media Wikidata uh, developer or anything else, is uh, 
you know, a flexible structure is better than a rigid structure, uh, but it's also better than no structure. <coughs> uh, uh, thank you all to uh, Marcus Kutch and Denny Vranicic. Uh, I, I had a lot of back and forth with them, and they gave me feedback for uh, for uh, all this talk, which does not imply that they're endorsing any of what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, questions. Yeah. Just uh, maybe a comment that this was what you call temporary tables. Uh, is it? Uh, it's a question. Is it what you call what is also called named queries? What you would call um, like similar to SQL views? I see. Um, no, I don't think you can... Here, let me show an example of what I mean, actually. Uh, I wanted to... This isn't going to answer your question directly, but I wanted to show this anyway. Uh, how do I... Here, let me start Google Chrome here. Um, so, what's a good example of a drill down here? Let me do... Um, I'll show this one yesterday at the, uh, uh, at the tutorial. Um, uh, this will, I, I will, this will <coughs> answer your question. Uh, so semantic drill down defines this, an interface like this, this happens to be a wiki about wikis that use semantic media wiki. Uh, where's the big one? So the sites. So you have here, um, the, the set of values for each facet. Uh, and then if I click through, let me get all the ones in the German language that focus on, oh, I guess I'll do education, that's appropriate enough. Um, so, yeah, every time you, you select a set of filters here, it goes through and has to run a query to get each of these numbers for additional, uh, for clicking on additional values. So that's what I mean by, by uh, a, a lot of queries being run every time. So what Semantic Drill Down does is it creates a temporary table holding all the pages that, uh, um, that fit the current selected set of filters. So I don't think you could predefine all of the, um, all of the views or whatever they're called in a, in a triple store uh, to handle this kind of thing. I think it has to be done dynamically on the fly just because there's so many combinations. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so this is the big unknown, as far as I'm concerned, whether you can do this kind of interface uh, with it directly with using Sparkle uh, and, and get it to run fast enough.